The test is in four sections. At the end of the test, you will be given 10 minutes to transfer your answers to an answer sheet. Now turn to section 1. Section 1 First, you have some time to look at questions 1 to 5. Now we shall begin. You should answer the questions as you listen because you will not hear the recording a second time. Listen carefully and answer questions 1 to 5. So, what strategies had people developed to ensure their own safety? Let's have a look at the figures here. Well, First of all, it was quite striking that there were often distinct answers from the men and women. It was mainly women, for example, who said one shouldn't ever stop to find out how to get somewhere, whereas it was men who said you should try to avoid looking directly at other drivers. Both men and women... Oh, sorry, no. Uh, it was women who said you had to tell someone when you were due to get to a particular destination. Then, I had thought that it would be mainly men, but both sexes made the point that it's much safer to get keys out well in advance as you go towards your car. Men were very aware that muggers or whatever might be concealed behind the car. They also made the point that you should leave plenty of room when you park your car, so you can make a quick getaway if you need to. Finally, Locking doors at all times. Men didn't think it was quite as important as women, but both gave it a high safety rating. When we asked them what they thought the best improvements had been in the last five years in helping with road rage problems... Before you hear the rest of the conversation, you have some time to look at questions 6 to 10. Now listen and answer questions 6 to 10. Hi, Mr. Hayes. It's so great to see you again. Mary, one of my most favourite students. So, how are you? Well, to be honest, Mr. Hayes, not so good. That's why I wanted to see you. It's about university. So different from high school. Oh, dear. Well, why don't we sit down over there and you can tell me all about it. Let's see if I can be of any help to you. Oh dear, I feel so stupid now. I shouldn't have bothered you. Don't be silly, Mary. We all need someone to speak to sometimes. And since your mother and father are in New Zealand, you probably feel a bit lost now and then. But before you say anything else... Why don't you tell me the, all the things that you like about your new life at university? Gee, I don't know. I guess I like the city. Canterbury Cathedral is one of my favorite places. I often go there just to sit and think. Or just sit. Oh, I can quite understand that. And you've got the sea. I love the sea. And you are never more than a short cycle ride from the lovely Kent countryside. And how are your teachers? Oh, the profs are great. Not as good as you, but really interesting and always ready to explain things after class. But I don't know. They're really good. But I just can't seem to feel enthusiastic about studying anymore. 
Mary? Not a keen student any more? My dear, that's so hard to believe. You were always so energetic and interested in all your studies, except German, if I remember correctly. But you still did very well in it. And you always wanted to major in biology, which is what you're doing now. Do you still enjoy biology? That is the end of section one. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section two. Section two. First, you have some time to look at questions 11 to 15. Now listen carefully and answer questions 11 to 15. Remember that this is a vocational training institute. We train you so that you can take up a particular kind of job. So it is important that you know the main roles of the jobs, what the work is like, and what kind of qualities you need to succeed at them. A physical fitness instructor works in health and fitness centres, preparing individual programmes for ordinary members of the public. Physical fitness instructors prepare routines of exercises to suit the individual client's age and level of fitness. Sports administrators run clubs and sporting associations. Their duties include such things as booking playing fields with local councils, and organising the schedule of games or events for the club. So, they need good organisational skills. Sports psychologists spend time with professional athletes, helping them approach competition with a positive mental attitude to enable them to achieve their personal best. They do this by improving motivation and concentration, or assisting with stress management. Physical education, or PE teachers, instruct young students in how to exercise, play sport, and do other recreational activities correctly and safely. PE teachers help the development of coordination, balance, posture, and flexibility, with things like simple catching and throwing skills. They are not expected to be experts in all sports, but must be able to show students the basic techniques involved in a wide range of activities. Recreation officers often find themselves working for local government authorities and local groups. Their aim is to raise people's awareness of healthy lifestyles and improve general fitness through arranging recreational activities for groups of all ages, from the very young to the elderly. There are many other job opportunities which our graduates can look forward to. If you're interested in any of these, then I suggest... Before you hear the rest of the talk, you have some time to look at questions 16 to 20.
Now listen and answer questions 16 to 20. Now, on to Radford. For a town of its size, Radford has some unusually good leisure and community facilities and has quite a good shopping centre with an interesting range of shops. As you go into Radford, there's a new, well, quite new, Olympic-sized swimming pool. Uh, that's on the outskirts at a place called Renton. Above the pool, there's a high-tech fitness centre. Are there any ice skaters here? No? Oh, pity. Uh, the facilities for ice skating are excellent. Well, uh, the new Metro Tower right in the centre of town has got an ice rink and a sports hall for squash, badminton, volleyball and several other indoor sports. And in the same building there's a new cinema with six screens. Uh, then, let me see, um, in the main square, just two minutes walk from the Metro Tower, there's the Theatre Royal, which often gets London productions on tour. And in the streets nearby, you can find a good range of inexpensive restaurants, including Indian, Chinese, Thai and Italian. That is the end of Section 2. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 3. Section 3. First, you have some time to look at questions 21 to 26. Now listen carefully and answer questions 21 to 26. So let's move on to when each type of medium could be used. I guess we could start by trying to identify the best situation for each type of media. What do you mean? I'm talking about whether each medium should be used with different size groups. For example, we could look at pictures and ask whether they're more useful for an individual child, a few children together, or a full class. In this case, I'd say pictures are best with individual children because they give them an opportunity to let their imaginations run wild. Yes, I see. Let's take tapes next. Although tapes look ideal for individual children, I feel they're best suited to small group work. Hmm. This way, children don't feel isolated because they can get help from their friends. Computers are the same. I think they're better with small numbers of children and they're hardly ever useful with a whole class. Videos, however, are ideal for use with everyone present in the class, especially when children have individual activity sheets to help them focus their minds on what's in the video. And what about books? What would you recommend for them? Books are ideal for children to use by themselves. Mm. I know they're used with groups in schools, but I wouldn't recommend it. Other pictorial media like maps, though, are different. I'd always plan group work around those. Mm. Give the children a chance to interact and to share ideas. Mm, I agree. Teachers often just leave maps on the wall for children to look at when they have some free time. But kids really enjoy using them for problem solving. Yes. Different people have different ideas, I suppose. Yeah. And different teachers recommend different tools for different age groups. Before you hear the rest of the discussion, you have some time to look at questions 27 to 30.
Now listen and answer questions 27 to 30. Well, sir, just some advice, really. It's about computers. Would you advise us to buy one? Uh, what can I say, um, uh, Andy? Uh, I know it's a massive expense, but I really feel it would be of great benefit. You can always look in the student union adverts for second-hand ones. Um, yes? I I've been looking at some of last year's dissertations. Oh, is, is that a good idea, sir? I, I heard... Well, that. I don't think you should read them in detail too early, or you might end up taking more of their ideas than you realise. Um, but yes, it, it really is the best guide you can have to the um, uh, expectations of the... Um, of what's expected when you write a dissertation. Sorry, Jane, I interrupted you. That's OK. It's just that they did a lot of research using questionnaires... Is that a good idea? I think questionnaires are very good at telling you how people fill in questionnaires. Uh, but to be frank, they tell you very little else. Avoid them. Mm. Um, about interviews, is it OK if we interview you? The tutors? Well, uh, I don't see why not. They don't have any special contribution to make, but you can if you want. Uh, there's a whole section on this issue in the research guide. I'm afraid it's slightly out of date, and you're probably better talking to the tutor on the research methods course. But you might find it useful to start there. OK. Yeah, thanks. OK, well, great. Uh, I hope that's sorted a few things out. You can always come and see me or drop me a note if you've got any more queries. Right. Fine. OK, thanks. That is the end of Section 3. You now have half a minute to check your answers. Now turn to section 4. Section 4. You will First, you have some time to look at questions 31 to 40. Now listen carefully and answer questions 31 to 40. Do you have any suggestions for prospective students? What bothers me most is handing in essays on time. I almost missed the deadline once because there were three essays due within the same week. So rationalising your time is critical. Well, that's true. The lectures deliver so much useful information. I have poor memory, so I kept making notes and revisiting them on a regular basis. To my surprise, at the end of the semester, I have learnt the key concepts by heart. How was the research? I heard that it was quite challenging. How did you manage to overcome the difficulties? That's true. The majority of us had no clue how to carry out the research at first. Fortunately, when I was digging up reference materials at the library, I sought help from the librarian. She taught me about finding the appropriate resources and choosing the proper research methods. Have you checked out the online forum? Yes, it has become a habit for me to visit the forum regularly, in a sense. It extends classroom learning. It is where the students post academic problems that they come across and get support from the faculty members. Some of my classmates didn't do so well during the placement tests. I feel that background reading is necessary. Lastly, do you have anything to say to the freshmen? I was really ambitious at first, trying to get straight A's on my transcript. I made tons of notes and worked hard even on the optional assignments to get extra credit. 
I stress myself out before having an emotional breakdown. After consulting my advisor, I found it important to set realistic goals. Don't push yourself too hard. It is wise to sort out your priorities. Thank you for coming here today and providing valuable feedback on the programme. Have a great summer break. That is the end of section 4. You now have half a minute to check your answers.